seen it before though. Oh yes, there, there it is. There it is. Yeah. Never mind. Okay, tonight is the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board and the Harbor Management Commission meeting for Thursday, January 28th at 7 p.m. This is a virtual meeting in accordance with the governor's executive order and pursuant to current state orders related to public meetings, this meeting will be recorded and later made available on the town's website for viewing. Now I'll introduce Dan Silbo, the chair of the commission. Hello everybody, good evening. Um, so let's start off with public comments. I see no one, right? We don't have any, yeah. all right. Um, the minutes for uh, December 17th, 2020. Any additions or corrections? Move to approve. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Wow, well, we're getting that buzzing. Um, all right, very good. Letters and announcements. Kathy, any letters or announcements? Uh, nothing came in. Okay. Uh, it's going along very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, old business capital improvement program. Um, Dan, you want to go back to um, monthly report? Oh, sorry about that. Monthly report for December 2020. Sorry about that. There we go. Kathy, are any. Um, Activities that you're doing now that you haven't done last year because of the COVID situation? I think I mentioned last month um, that we were setting up the eSports. So that kicked off this month mm -hmm. with um, staff getting the word out and um, uh, students are signing up to be on, to play against each other on, uh, as an eSport program with the gaming. So that is really new. Mm -hmm. um, and it's taken off slowly, but it seems to be picking up. All right, very good. And we're still doing some programs um, virtually, a lot of the fitness programs. And um, actually uh, with Rachel here, our karate program took off this month for signups. We actually had to offer a second class in it. And that is in person but it's following all of the protocols that need to be put in place. Okay. So, I, so um, that's going on at the community center. Right now, we only have the community center to do some things. Okay. Um, I see the nature center uh, purchased a filtration system for aquatic animals. What, is that fish or is that something else, another type of animal? or? Yeah, it's some of their um, some of their their animals that are in water. I'm not sure which ones. The snap. I think the snapping turtle tubby needed a new filtration system. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> but uh, but uh, Patrick, our nature center director, did talk with the friends because we're trying obviously to keep that budget ex those budget expenses really low because right now there's no money coming in. So um, they've really stepped up to the plate. They did that, plus they did a GoFundMe page to help pay for animal care. And their goal was to raise $1,000 and they got right to that. So that worked out really well. That's good. Kathy, I'm, I'm just curious on the, um, the brochures for the registration of the programs, obviously that's all being done a lot different with COVID. Do you, um, is that pretty much Obviously, it's the accepted way to go because that's the way it is. But um, have there been any glitches with how that's working out? Um, we've done it all online, and we've done it online so that we have the ability to go in and make changes immediately in case something changes. And it seems to have worked out. I haven't heard um, any. Nobody's called in to say they're having a real problem with it. We do advertise in the rear reminder that registrations coming up and if you because remember it used to come out in the rear reminder mm -hmm. so we actually do um we do either an ad or a news release in the rear reminder letting people know where it is and how to get to it okay and yeah that's what i was going to ask you how how the information was getting out so people knew how to do it <clears throat> yep and when people call up we have staff that answer the phone that walk people through some of it if they need that 
so it definitely is a different way of doing it. Very good. All right. Okay. Um, we said letters and announcements that there is none, right? And then we're getting back to old business, the capital improvement. And you, you sent us something, right, Kathy? I did not, not for old business. Not for capital, this is a different one? No, that was in the minutes. Oh. The, uh, that's- The draft the uh, capital improvements? Yeah, the list of all the, um, the capital improvement projects was included in the minutes. Okay. Did you approve that as the priority moving forward? Mm-hmm. And we submitted that, it goes to the engineering department and then it goes to the capital improvement advisory board. And so last night was parks and recs turn to meet with them and go over everything. Good news, bad news, because most of them were last year's projects. They already knew about them. And um, I identified the community center parking lot because that was new because the, so a lot of the parking lot areas need to be repaired. So we went through those and right now they're just taking input from all the different departments okay. and then they'll either get back with questions or they will um, go ahead and make their priorities to submit to the town manager for his review. And one of the things we're going to talk about a little later in the meeting, but we had a, we had a meeting with Little League representatives and um, they had asked about what the status of the greenfield base with the greenfield fence was. I explained to them we were submitting it again. It was a priority of the boards. And they had remembered that the uh, Little League Classic Field, uh, all the drainage work that was 170,000, we had gotten 25,000 in a previous budget from capital improvement towards the, the cost of the work. And Little League uh, reminded me that last year they had said that, and we did this last year, I'd forgotten about it this year. Could we reallocate that money towards the Greenfield fence? Because the Greenfield fence was 53,000. And if that 25,000 went towards it, we'd only be asking for 28,000. So I thought that was a great idea that they reminded me. We asked last year, but we didn't get any funding. So I went ahead and also made that request last night. So okay. that's all up there. And I'll keep making that request as we go through the whole budget process. Somewhere along the line, someone might listen. Is, so, um, so that's where it is right now. Is Little League willing to kick in any money? Is they Little didn't League say that. No, oh, okay. They have a lot of plans they, say, they want to do, and we'll get yeah. to that a little later on, but um, they didn't offer up any. Yeah, so, you know, sometimes if they want to kick in $10,000, they'll say, all right, we'll do it. And maybe if, if we get yeah. close. Yeah. Is the field playable, Kathy? Yes, and okay. we do repair the fence all the time. Yeah, it's just that, you know, you can only repair it so many times. Sure. Yeah. Everything's tight. Okay. Um, new business. So it's preparation for the sports leagues. How is that going, Kathy? Uh, well, that's that's what I said we were leading into. Um, Rachel has started working with the uh, groups to begin to look at the spring. Mm -hmm. So she's been working through that. And I'm going to have her talk a little bit about um, what all that has transpired and get a little more into our uh, Little League meeting. Okay. So starting to hear from the different sports leagues to see what plans are going forward. Uh, men's softball was second, Tom Mull. Little League beat you to the email contact list. <laughs> I can't see everybody. Um, so I've heard from, heard from Little League um, and I'll fill you on that meeting. And I said men's softball as well. I talked with Tom Mull, and I know that he's also communicated with Rocky Hill about moving forward with planning for their spring season. I know that uh, GDR Soccer Club is taking registration as well as Weathersfield Youth Lacrosse. So those groups are moving forward with doing registration for the spring sports. Um, as I have in the past, we'll still work on doing like the field use request forms that we send and have them fill 
fill out what the fields they want to use and the time frames that go along with that. Obviously, you know, as I've, I've said to Tom and everybody else along the way, our hope is today that we're able to have a spring sports season. But anything can change between now and April, as we all know, but also know that they need to move forward with the beginning of the plans. Um, one of the things <clears throat> that we're going to do uh, that we're going to do a little bit differently this year is when it comes to putting together the field schedule. Um, so men's softball <clears throat> is probably the exception to the rule because Tom always sends me his schedule. Whereas with all of the other youth groups, I'm having to go to their websites every week on Friday, usually again on Monday and Tuesday to check what their schedule is. So this year we're gonna have all of the groups send me their weekly schedules. That way they know that what they're sending is the most up-to-date information because sometimes the website doesn't always get updated. So the designated representative for each of the groups will send me their schedules. And one of the things I know that they, the groups have talked about is having a shared calendar. So we're gonna implement phase one behind the scenes shared calendar. So as part of our software registration system, which is, uh, is RecTrack, one of the add-on modules is called facility management, which allows us to use that software to schedule our facilities, whether it's actually scheduling the banquet room at the community center or whether it's scheduling of Busco field. So I've, start, I've set up all of our different fields as facilities within that software system. So in the past, it's always been, I've been inputting schedules into a Google document, which then is shared with physical services and parks and rec folks. So we're gonna start using the software registration system. So the calendar will be only for internal use and that will be automatically emailed to physical services, to staff as well. And um, it'll see like a weekly schedule that on Fusco Field, men's softball has games scheduled six, 6, 7, 30, and 9 o'clock, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and it'll list all the fields and then go across with the groups and the times that are associated. So yet again, that's not going to be for public viewing. That's just going to be for internal viewing. There does, going down the line in the future, there is the option that that becomes a public calendar so that anybody could go online and yet again, I'm just gonna pick on Tom Mull that he can see, oh my gosh, someone took Fusco Field on Wednesday night. What am I gonna do? I can't play my men's softball field, but we are not anywhere near that. We're just gonna use it for internal scheduling purposes. Okay. And the external scheduling is a whole different packet that costs more money. So it's a, it's a work in progress. Mm -hmm. But it's something that we wanted was well, something we've wanted to implement and I feel like using it for fields is an easy way because there's not, you know, little league soccer, youth lacrosse, men's softball. They're not having to pay to reserve the field so that we don't have to worry about the GL and the trans the cash transaction that goes along with it. It's just inputting that information and it allows me to do for the entire season. So I can go in and men's softball has their game for the entire season, I can sit one day and input all of those games for the entire season instead of each week having to go in. Each week, I'm still gonna obviously wanna check to make sure nothing has changed, but it allows us to schedule out much farther along the season as well, which will be an aid to physical services because they can look and see for like scheduled maintenance that there's, oh, there's no game scheduled in three weeks that will be the day that we'll aerate the field or apply whatever needs to be done. So we're going to test it out with the fields and hopefully it goes well. Sounds good. Um, Any questions on that? No, I, I think we have something similar to that at uh, work. It's only book conference rooms. It's very similar. There's only certain people that um, can do it and other, the rest of us, it's like read only. You can view yeah. it, but you can't. So it, that's, sounds similar to uh, what uh, we have already. So it, it works. So that'll be, that'll be good. I think it'd be a lot, even much better when the public can see it, it'll save you some questions. Yeah, it, it, ha it helps in that way. I said, I know that um, Newington Parks and Rec, you can see it, but you can't reserve it because mm -hmm. that's always the, I would, otherwise someone would go and start to reserve fields. So in Newington, they allow the public to see whether the field is available or not to then request it. Um, but I think that that's phase two for us. 
Yeah. Is that read only version an extra cost or is it just an extra cost when you add additional users? It's additional cost for displaying on the web. Oh, okay. So it doesn't it sounds great though, Rachel. That's great. Yeah. It sounds like a good long-term process. Hopefully it should work, so. So that's overall for that. Did you want me to fill in, Kath, on the Before Little League meeting? Or... Little League meeting. Is that where you were going to go? Yes. I, I just wanted to do a quick update while we're talking about spring sports. We are working with the soccer group. Um, I believe we talked about it last meeting that they requested locating a shed um, yeah. for their equipment. So we are working through that process. We went out with maintenance to see if we put a shed in the area they were talking, if it was feasible, if it was reasonable, all of those kinds of issues. Can the mower get around it? Those kinds of things. And, it, <clears throat> and they're looking to do it at the uh, upper Dean field, the little, we call it the little soccer field at Dean. And um, one of the soccer people uh, lives adjacent to sort of where the shed would go. His property is like right next door. So we're working through that. And um, as you know, town and bureaucracy, we have to what, look for our property line. We have to look at setbacks. We have to look at the size of the shed. Those are the next steps to see that it's all feasible and whether or not we need to go and get permission from any of the town boards to do that. And be, when, before we go to the boards, but after we figure everything out, we'll go to the school district to make sure they're okay with us putting a shed on school property, if you will. Even though it's all town property, it's all just part of the process to go through. So that's in the works. Very good. That's good. All right. That's so we could um, we could do now what we'd like to do is uh, fill you in a little bit on the uh, the little league meeting that we had. Um, was that just yesterday morning? Yes, it was just yesterday morning. <laughs> it, seemed, it seemed like so far away. It was a very good meeting. Uh, Rachel set it up with uh, the little league people. I'm going to let her go into it and give you some of the good things that came out of the meeting. Mm -hmm. I said it was good. There was a lot of um, the board has changed at Little League. Um, so a lot of people that have been associated with Little League for a long time, but that now are sitting in a board position, new president, uh, new person in charge of baseball, um, baseball operations as far as that. So veterans to the league, but new to the board. So just to have our, our annual meeting to discuss field prep projects to get ready before the season, um, kind of just maintenance issues to go along with that. Um, requests that they, their field request things all along of that, which was really good. And the president, you know, said that he really hopes that we can have uh, increased communication, which is which is good because that's something that we've always wanted to have with Little League. Um, and so having a new president that wants to have regular meetings to discuss issues that are going on. Um, that, that may come up and that we can address in a timely manner and make sure everything that's being taken care of. Um, one thing though that a project request that they have, which is a cool idea, um, but has a lot of I's to dot, T's to cross, and, and a lot of other letters is what's called Live, live Barn, right? Is it a formal name yeah. of it? Um, it was brought to us by one of the new board members and they are looking to install all cameras on lighted classic and green fields so that they can live stream the games. Um, so apparently, according to Live Barn, there are no parks and rec departments in Connecticut that are currently using this. I learned yesterday they're very popular in hockey. Um, I did hear when they say Rocky Hill, Newington, I'm not oh. sure in Berlin, not Glastonbury, Mark, Mike was on the, was on the list um, of, they are approaching other parts, places about having that in. So um, Kathy started the discussion with the electrician about what it required to get power um, to where they're looking to place on top of the backstops. Um, we had to break the news that there is no Wi-Fi <laughs> at our parks. So that's another obstacle that has to overcome. So kind of looking, moving forward at whether this is a project that would um, 
can potentially happen for this season and costs that would be associated along with liability for filming, recording, vandalism, all the stuff that goes along with that. Um, I know that Ross Field in Glastonbury has something like this. It may not be the brand um, or the company that you're mentioning, um, but I know that you can watch games played at Ross Field in Glastonbury online. Is that Little League or adults? It, it's Little League. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Yep. So like my mom who lived in Florida at the time could watch my nephew play baseball. And that was five years ago. So I know that I know they have something. Um, if the website that we're using or looking at doesn't, I do know that they have that capability somehow anyway. That's good to know. Thanks. I think, I think something to keep in mind too, if it can tie in together, which would make sense just from a security standpoint is that uh, if those cameras would also do security surveillance, obviously during off hours, it'd kind of be a bonus if we're gonna go through all this trouble. There's at, least a dozen, list. at least a dozen times a year, I'm kicking kids off of the uh, fence or the um, little league field next to field one, whether it's adults <laughs> with their kids or a bunch of kids jump on the fence, that, that, that'll be good for their security, especially. Well, maybe when we put the sign up that says video being taken. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So does is the company covering a lot of these costs or is it something they're looking for? Like is, is Little League paying those? Where's the, or is we it- We haven't a gotten that far yet. Um, we, we were trying to make sure uh, um, with the electrician that it was doable because they need power at a certain location. So we had to give them a list of questions from the electrician and they just got back to us with some of those answers. So then the next step is looking at all of those other things that, um, that are cost, who owns the cameras. They told us the company owns the cameras. They get vandalized, it's the company's problem. Uh, we have to sit down with Little League and talk about What's if the town has a cost? If we if we're able to pull the electric line to where they need it, can they pay for materials? All of that stuff is going to come into the discussion. And mm -hmm. they said the next thing they're going to do is set up a meeting with us and the vendor that they want to use so that we can go over all that stuff. So did the, they did Live Barn approach Little League or did Little League approach Live Barn? Do we know? I think, Rachel, did you get the sense Little League approached Live Barn? Because they were looking into it in general. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then when they found out we didn't have Wi-Fi, they went to Live Barn because they're cellular. Gotcha. And then I'm assuming I'm not one of these parents, but I know there are plenty out there who don't want their kids mm -hmm. videoed and all of that. Like parent, teach, you know, you have to sign the permission all slips the for school and everything. So yeah. I feel that that obviously would be something that could be a potential hurdle or at least liability wise. Yep, that's on our list too, as to what the, like our park and rec, when you sign up for a program, there's a place to that you have to sign off that we can take video and pictures and stuff. So you gotta do all of that ahead of time. I think Little League's aware of it. I don't know how far they've gotten with it yet. Okay. That's a, that's Kathy, a at, least, at least two of those fields have power at the, um, like the announce, they both have the boxes because they have microphones where you could, you know, say who's up next and that kind of thing. Would that, wouldn't that power be enough? Or it couldn't they splice from it or something? They've actually asked for a dedicated line. Oh, I see. Yep. And <clears throat> uh, lighted is going to be the easiest to do because the power is right there. They're not going to have to go that far since it's the backstop. Greenfield, right. we believe they're going to have to come off the street, but the backstop is close to the street. It's not super close, but yeah. close. Classic's going to present a problem. You may have heard me talk about this in the past. It comes up every once in a while when we want to dig out in that Millwoods Park. There's a major gas line that runs through the park. 
a, a major gas line, like they fly it by helicopter every day to make sure nobody's digging on it or anything. So to go over it, you can only hand dig. You can't use any uh, power tools. So, um, and you have to get permission ahead of time. So that may present a little problem with classic, but we've let Little League know that. Whether or not they read my email, I'm not sure, but it's in the email. Um, so that would be, and, and for classic, it would have to come from the concession stand. Okay. So we've gotten that far with it. Does the high school run anything like this? I know Xavier, um, they run something and it's through, I want to say through like a YouTube channel, but they, well, they it's a whole sports, yeah, it's a whole sports thing they do and a bunch of high schools are on it and yeah. uh, they stream through, through whatever the channel is, you have to pay for it. Um, but is it, uh, does, the weather, does Weatherfield do that or do we know? I don't know, I, we, could, we could ask. I think but they were doing something in the, uh, Mike Maltesi told me, Mike Maltesi, excuse me, told me this past fall that they were doing something through YouTube because there was no spectators allowed yeah. at the event. Mm -hmm. um, and he did say it was a YouTube channel. Yeah, it was, uh, Xavier's been doing it for a few years. They want, you know, they want people to pay for it, obviously. But yeah. uh, it's it was uh, basketball, football, I think hockey. And I don't know of anything else, but uh, you could pay for it and watch all the events, you know, without leaving the comfort of your home, I guess. So I, I think it's available on a high school level. I don't, uh, but this sounds very similar to that. So it kind of, it sounds really neat yeah. if we can get through everything. Mm -hmm. So that's our plan. Very good. That's kind of interesting. Um, yeah, I wonder if any of the other leagues after this starts will be get interested in it. men's softball, Tom. Yeah, I, I, I wrote notes already. <laughs> men's softball likes the social aspect, though. But yeah, you may not want to be video uh, live. Yeah, that could be. <laughs> have to, uh, I wonder if they be. be Deep the uh, words that come out of some of the guys' mouths. <laughs> For mature audiences only. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see what's next. Um, we talked about the budget already, right, Kathy? We talked about the. We talked about CIP. Yeah. I thought I would be able to tell you what the schedule was for putting together the budget for the upcoming year. They haven't mm -hmm. sent us the calendar yet, but we're working on it. Okay. And I just wanted to let the board know that when we got funded for this year, we got funded with them cutting out a lot of the summer programs because we knew we weren't going to do them. Right now, we anticipate putting them all back in. So just to make you aware, our budget is going to jump because we're going to put all those back in mm -hmm. and the minimum wage is going up again. So... Yeah. Um, when you see it, if I send it to you next month and you see like, I don't know how much it jumped, I don't even want to know, that'll be why. We won't be looking for anything new or different, but it'll just be, we've put back in what was cut and we're going to, um, uh, we're going to, we have to increase uh, fees, be, uh, payroll because of the minimum wage. Currently it, the minimum is $12 now and August 1st, it goes to 13. So we will catch part of the summer. Okay. All right. Well, the president wants it to go to 15 nationwide, right? Yeah. That so maybe that'll be going up faster than we yeah. thought. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Who knows? Yeah. Uh, Solomon Wells House, anything, Kathy? No, we still haven't opened it yet. Okay. We're, we're watching numbers and we're going to see what's going to happen for the spring. Okay. And there's no repair issues or anything else? No problems? No, nothing that's come to our attention at this point in time. Okay, very good. I know Mary's been in touch with the caretaker and I don't believe anything's come up. Okay. All right. Um, Keisha Farms Committee, we did not have a meeting in January. Um, what is happening is, uh, I think we went through this a little bit, 
you the university of the university of hartford is going to be helping us do a plan um the person that was going to help us um left the university the professor so now they're finding another person that's going to help us um and the kids were away on break in january so you know so hopefully i'll i'll learn more i think next week is the uh meeting for the farm so i'll learn more on what is happening but uh really nothing has happened much in the last month and a half two months it's just kind of waiting to get somebody and then uh We'll see where it goes from there. Um, board member comments, any comments, questions? Akali? I, um, I actually wanted to bring up, um, I've been trying to think about the, the issue we've been talking about for the past year, the fields. Um, and kind of the maintenance, and, and now we're getting around to spring sports again. I just wanted to bring this conversation to the front. Um, it was something that we had been really kind of pushing for last year around this time, um, trying to make sure that the fields were maintained um, and that they were on schedule to be taken care of, not just ready to be played on, but um, being treated and cared for so that they continue to be healthy and they continue to um, go through the, the proper maintenance schedule. And I've just been thinking about this for the past few months, you know, like what, what are we doing? We got the fields resting um, all last spring um, and then summer kind of some, some things were happening, some things weren't. And then we just kind of stopped talking about it. So I wanted to bring it back up because I think that there's gonna be a lot of activity this spring and this summer um, with, with fields being used. And I wanted to readdress the um, communication between physical services and parks and recreation. Um, so with the shared services change that's happened within the schools um, over the past year, the the Board of Ed and the town um, are now share their physical services um, and there isn't a dedicated Board of Education uh, maintenance and physical services crew. But they do have a liaison. There is an employee for the, parks, uh, for the Board of Education who is the liaison for the Board of Ed to parks and to, uh, I'm sorry, physical services. And that's the person, if there's issues going on in the schools, that the school, the board and the principals in the school system reach out to and communicate with to ensure that those are getting looked at. I just was wondering if when, if there's ever been a position like this for parks and recreation, and I can't help but wonder if we had a position like that, would we have a better handle on what physical service is doing for the fields, um, specifically the athletic fields, to ensure that they are continuing to be healthy, that they are continuing to rest when they're needed, but they're continuing to be seated and um, aerated and all of that stuff. I, I remember we had that conversation with Sally Cat, um, and I just want to bring that back up again because when when she talked, she just aren't a lot of employees for the department. With the purchase of Keisha Farms, there's more work for them to be done. I I don't know. I just I just been kind of running. I feel like I'm running around in circles about this topic and nothing's really happening about it. And I just can't help but wonder if anybody else is feeling this way and can we, can we get something done about it instead of talking about it? Colleen, so the liaison from, I missed that, is from the Board of Ed to Fiscal Services is one of the Board of Ed members. It's not a paid position, it's the Board of Ed member? No, it's a paid position. Oh, okay. 
and he's and it's a physical services employee and he was hired when physical services took over the the maintenance the maintenance of board of ed when they started doing the shared services is the Kathy? Do you know? Is the field guru soil expert? They have it. Physical services that Sally Katz was talking about at our last meeting. Is he a full time employee of physical services? And yes. may that potentially be someone who could take on this role? Is that Alan? That is Alan. That that's who currently is in charge of the maintenance of the of the park division. The parks crew that there is. Could we potentially have him be at these, maybe as a starting point, having him be at these meetings when the fields are in use? I don't know. If he, he's in a union where it would require overtime to be here. Gotcha. I could certainly, I could certainly ask, or we could, um, I would think in that point, that you also have to invite the department head, that would be Sally, to come to the meeting. I could certainly explore that. I, I think maybe Colleen, did they ever give a name of the person? Did they talk about Paul? Did you it's ever Paul Shoning, yeah, Paul Shoning. And he's great, right? Like he's great when, when you have something that needs to be done, he's there, he's, he can answer questions on the, on the physical services behalf. And he has a lot of knowledge, and he can also go to bat for the for the board of ed um, when when we're feeling like things aren't really getting um, answered, questions aren't getting answered. Um, he's been an asset to to the board of ed and to to the PTO at least at Emerson Williams. And um, I just feel like perhaps if there was a position like that um, for Parks and Rec, that that communication. Um, that I feel is is a little bit of a breakdown in between parks and rec and physical services um, could could just be stronger and allow physical services to tell parks and rec hey this field needs for a break and parks and rec can tell physical services hey this one and we need it to get done weekly or monthly or whatever um, and just be the expert on how our fields should be maintained for years, not just it's springtime, we need to aerate, but like, hey, this field, we've had this field in use for the past 10 years and it hasn't been a break, we have to give it a break. Or we need to resod this one because the drainage is bad or whatever. I mean, I, I don't know, I'm not that person, but I just feel like there isn't anyone that that's, that's the person. And, and I just can't help but wonder, instead of, building new fields and, and doing all of that stuff. Can't we, can't we take care of the fields that we have better than how they're being taken care of? Which is, I think the discussion we had last December when we invited all of the, um, when we invited all of the teams to come in and to, uh, the leagues to come and speak with us. I think that the point you're getting at Colleen too, is just improving transparency with, physical services and the communicate the lines of communication that are there. I feel like some of the sports teams didn't, didn't feel like that was there. And if, even if all of this stuff is happening as board members, we're not aware that it's happening to be able to relay that to sports teams who are asking us about it and um, vice versa kind of too. I just wanted to bring the term back because I think that it's an important aspect that we might have lost sight of with um, everything being remote and COVID and all of the leagues not taking taking place and, and being active. Um, I just don't I just don't want it to, to get forgotten because time has passed and we still haven't really done anything about it. And Colleen, can you explain how Paul interacts? Does he go to board meetings or does he just interact directly with principals or the PTO or how does that work? Well, he doesn't, I haven't seen him at any of the board meetings. Uh, he, he, I believe he's a physical services employee, yeah. but his, 
but he works through, he works in the schools. So he's in the schools all the time. And because now the custodial staff is under physical, uh, physical services, he help, he kind of oversees that as well. So he, they're in, he's in the schools, he's in those buildings, he's hearing the issues, he's, he's kind of triaging um, the, the day-to-day maintenance that needs to get done. Um, and he's sort of helping facilitate um, any of the bigger, any of the work that needs to get done in the schools. Okay, so he's yeah, Paul the- is the maintenance and custodial supervisor for the school system. And we even interact with him because he's a resource to us also. <clears throat> so he's the, he's the maintenance and custodial supervisor. Alan is the park supervisor. So that's Alan's role. So he acts, so, Colleen, as a direct point person. So like if you have an issue yes. at the school, you guys can just contact him directly instead of going through another middleman. Yes. Kathy, Which I think that, that improves communication. Kathy, is that, who do you contact then? Do you contact Sally or do you contact Alan? We contact, <clears throat> excuse me, we contact Alan. All right. We work, to, so Rachel works directly with Alan on a regular basis. So there is a lot of back and forth. These are the issues when we deal with maintenance issues, it does go back and forth in that regard. And we did talk about that with Little League and we did talk about the communication. And Alan was part of that meeting. So they do, they did meet with Alan and they do talk with him. So there is, there is communication there. And they talked about, they talked about, uh, Colleen, what you're saying, more of it. So, do you know? Kathy, well, I I'm think sorry. Alan, I, I mean, I think Alan is like the, what is his position? He's the parks supervisor, mm-hmm. right? So he, he's in charge of this that are doing the mowing and the of all the fields and of all the schools and of all of the green space is that correct yes so is he are we to believe that he's also the person who is an expert on how to maintain athletic fields over a 20-year period for the town he is yes and does he have any sort of um like uh does he have like a background in that is that some sort of degree or um some sort of license or classification or something like that, that, that you, you would go to and learn about how to properly maintain athletic fields and how they're different from like a green space on an island of a, of a road? I would say that, yes, he has that experience and he does do ongoing education for fields. Specifically for athletic fields. Uh, I think there's fields. I think they do training with, for pesticides, things of that nature, a variety yeah. of different things that they do the training on. You know, I just, I think what has the sports up, you froze is there. really a great field. Sorry. Oh, I froze. Yeah. Heather's field has a lot of really like really great feel. Am I freezing? You are freezing. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, and I just think when I hear people complaining about our fields and and looking at our fields, especially like Mill Woods, Mill Woods really made, um, I just couldn't we do any better do better am i froze yeah no i think we heard you that could we do better is that that's what you said couldn't we do better with what we're doing now or how can we do better what can be done better because i think there is something to be said about having like a 15 year or 20 year plan on how we should be taking care of these fields, not just the maintenance, not just getting new fences, but, um, you know, someone who has experience with, and someone who has this, you know, an education on how to take care of green spaces. 
um, right. And I would think would really benefit us. And also Colleen, I think we've talked about this before too, just smaller dollar fixes that could be impactful. <clears throat> Kathy, I don't, don't mean to put you on the spot, but I, and I know this is certainly, certainly sensitive to me. And I know there's many towns that, you know, have their own parks and rec, you know, maintenance staff, which you could argue both ways, whether that were or not, but, um, in, in your opinion, I mean, and I know we keep barking up this tree and I think Colleen's right, we just keep talking about it, but there hasn't been much much change, but um, is, are you, are you okay with the way things are? I guess if you had a, if you had your druthers, I mean, yeah, things probably could be done better, but what do you see that could change that could help overall or we're just barking up a tree that we're wasting a lot of time? Well, I guess, I always, when you start talking about fixing things and doing the little things, and I know we went through this a year ago with the resources that are available to do all those little things and the responsibilities that they have, not just to the fields, but to the parks, to the green spaces. And not to get, I'm gonna just get away from the fields for a minute because if you look at just the garbage pickup alone, we don't have anybody picking up garbage on weekends. And it's it's just because it's not set up that way. So on Monday, when they're trying to pick everything up, it's it's a guy or two doing that. There's eight guys in the, there's eight people in the parks crew. And if you're pulling people away to do other things, it leaves you room to do the day-to-day -day stuff. But to look at some of those little things and do that, it doesn't work. It was supposed to be because you're in physical services, you, you have the ability to move people from division to division to assist. I don't know that they do as much as that now as maybe they used to. So that maybe they just have a mowing crew that goes and mows everything that there is to mow, but there's maybe a ball field crew that could just do ball fields and, and have the time to do some of the things you're thinking about. Um, we, there's, there's a very limited budget to do those kinds of things. That's all why we're always working with the sports groups to, do you guys have some money? Because we don't get it. We don't get as much as we'd like to get to do some of those, those little things that would be impactful. We do enough to make those fields safe, make them look good, let the kids play on them. They're not Yankee Stadium. They're not going to be Yankee Stadium. They're not going to be Fenway, but they're going to be safe and they're going to be playable. And I don't know if they're going to look like other towns because other towns do have more resources. So it is frustrating because sometimes Parks and Rec isn't the priority. In the fall, remember, I tell you, in the fall, half, if not three quarters of the crew goes and helps with leaves. So in the fall, which is a project time, they get to do projects then. So it's, it would almost, it's almost got to change a climate of how they look at things. And we could certainly start that discussion. I have no problem with trying to figure out a way to, to start that discussion. And I'm not trying to say, if you give us the money, we'll do it. I think Colleen's right. We need to look at a plan um, and try and address fields and try to each year do something that should improve a field but we just haven't done that. But I think potentially having a dedicated liaison who is not to say answering to Parks and Rec, but is sort of on Parks and Rec's, mm -hmm. I don't wanna say their side either, then that could potentially start to change that culture of having it you know, having all the physical services go all over the place. And I know Sally had said that they are very short staffed, that they're doing way more than they used to do and they have the same number of man hours to do it. But potentially having a true debt, like an official title of a point person within physical services for Parks and Rec could start to make some headway in that culture change. We could certainly try to explore that. I, I, if you're looking for a paid staff person, I don't know that you're gonna see an increase. Don't forget council didn't fund one of the maintainer positions this year. 
they left the position in the budget, but they didn't fund it for the year because they're looking to, to con control costs, to look at limiting. So it, it's, it's a, uh, I'm happy to have discussions that we could talk about this because I'm, I'm not sure Paul's not really a liaison, even though he serves as that for you. He is the supervisor of that operation. So he does have all that knowledge and is available to you and responds to you, which is great. I mean, we could certainly see if that type of an example can come on the park side. Right. I mean, I don't think it needs to be a new paid dedicated position, but someone who you know, maybe if Alan's the supervisor for all of the green space, if there's someone else who who has more of a supervisorial role mm -hmm. in the fields that they are, you know, take on a little bit more of a leadership role within that or something. You know, I'm not talking about making a whole new position, just okay. someone who might have an interest in it who wants to, I don't know. Oh. Yeah, like I also know that there's like a position for physical services who is like the tree warden, right? And his responsibility is to like uh, take care and, and kind of manage and protect and handle all of the tree issues that are going on um, in town. If we have a tree warden, which is kind of cool, um, why don't we have an athletic field warden? Um, why isn't there someone who is looking at the, the long-term use and the long-term maintenance of the athletic fields um, and, and kind of invest in the, in, in the investment. Um, take the time to really make sure that we're taking care of it. We're taking such good care of Catone Field. Little League takes great care of Lighted. Um, but can, can't we take care of the rest of the fields in a, in a way that is going to have them have a longer life um, than what we're doing now. I just can't help but wonder, like, I don't, I don't, can't do more. Isn't there something we can be doing that's better? I don't know, <clears throat> but we can certainly look into it. I don't have an answer tonight. I, I'm not sure how we go about that, but we can explore that. I, I, I think that would be a good idea, um, what Colleen said. If we can at least get more of a point person, not only for the leaks, but for you, if you see something without having to jump up and down uh, like your hair's on fire when you need something done. Um, I think that would be a great aid to the leaks and to the town um, and it would relieve a lot of stress and a lot of issues that way. Um, I will tell a quick story is uh, my son referees in Berlin soccer. So this is two years ago. So the town of Weathersfield isn't unique to these problems. He was refereeing on a field that had a hole in it pretty much up to his knee. And they had reported it to the town for a week and it wasn't fixed. Um, so, um, I think a lot of towns are, are, are go through these things. Maybe you don't realize it when you go play at these fields and everything, but, um, it's very similar in a lot of these, these towns, what they're going through. So I think a lot of it comes down to the money, but I think maybe we should at least try something new because I don't know much, you know, if much is changing. I don't know how anybody else feels about that, but. Thank you. And and to be to clarify, I'm not I'm not so concerned about the field because I know that that happens. And I it, from from our discussion, it sounds like that kind of gets um, fixed quite quickly. It seems like physical services responds to that quickly. They don't necessarily tell Perks and Rec that it's been repaired, but it does sound like the repair work is getting done, um, and that the fields are relatively safe. I mean, they're town fields, they're going to have bumps and divots and stuff. And I, I feel confident that Parks and uh, Physical Services is handling those kinds of issues. What I'm more concerned about, and I don't mean to keep barking on this tree, but what I'm more concerned about is the longer term um, maintenance and, and care for things. Like, 
we have a care plan for our yard. Um, you know, we don't just mow it and, and be done with it. We do things at, throughout the year so that our yard is healthy and that it has, um, you know, it's, I don't know, taken care of. I mean, my husband does all that stuff, but he, he does have some plan. And I just, you know, want to know that like, that our town has a plan for these fields that we take a lot of pride in and that our residents use a lot. Um, and so that's it. It's not the, it's not the holes. It's not that I, I feel confident that physical services is doing that. Um, and that's certain the feel I got from the meeting, but it's, it, again, it's the longer term stuff that I just can't help but wonder is, is it, uh, is it really getting So, um, yeah. I can certainly bring your concerns to the town manager and, and let him know what you're thinking and what you'd like to see and <clears throat> have that discussion with him. That, that sounds good. Thank you. And yeah, maybe you could even come up with some solution talking to your staff. Maybe there's some something sure. to come up with. Okay. Thanks, Kathy. Yeah. Sure. Um, any other comments? No, we're good. Okay, we're going to go into uh, the Harbor Management Commission now. Mike, the Harbor Master, anything? It's forever time, winter time. <laughs> no boat engine. Anything on the boat engine, Kathy? Yeah. Uh, Rick has sent out a few quotes or requests for quotes to get it fixed. I did. We, we sent out, um, we put together a request, request for written estimates for either a um, new or um, used. For, yeah, so I'm just pulling it right out. Um, can a new or used engine for 100, 150 horsepower engine, new or used with a minimum warranty of three years? Um, and that the written estimate needed to also include the cost for installation and rigging. I sent that quote out um, January 6 to four different vendors that um, we have worked with in the past and one that Dan Silbo had found for us. The written quotes are due back to me by 4.30 tomorrow, Friday. And to date, I have received two quotes. So they seem reasonable. I know you probably can't tell us what they are, but do they seem reasonable? I think I can tell. Like, can I tell them what they are? Or no, Kath. Oh yeah, we can, um, yeah we can we can share with you what the, the so far what the costs have come in, mm -hmm. um, and the information that we've got because we wanted to have a little bit of a discussion. So they're both for the two that we have are both for Yamaha and are both for Yamaha engines. One quote is eighteen thousand dollars and some change. The other quote is fourteen thousand dollars and some change. Um, the lower quote, though, the um, gentleman who I talked with uh, called me on the phone after he sent the quote and had a very honest conversation. And Mike and Derek might know more more about this. Um, COVID strikes in all ways, shapes, and forms, and apparently Yamaha is affected as well they are back ordered there is back orders on yamaha engines and he told me there are people that ordered engines in september that still have not come in now each vendor may be different so one vendor might already have one in stock and that's what they're doing it for um, the one company that did send a quote said i'm sending you a quote but i'm also telling you i cannot guarantee you i can have an engine before the beginning of the boat season because of the backlog of the manufacturing of new engines coming from overseas. I believe that COVID's been doing it for everything, even like jet skis. People are ordering jet skis waiting a year to get them. Mm -hmm. wow. it's, uh, I don't know as much about boats as like Tom and Mike and Mike, but those, those quotes seem reasonable or? I have no idea. I, I, I was going to say anything between fifteen and twenty thousand dollars for a motor. Motors are very, very, very expensive. Okay. Um, yeah. No the, the only other piece to this, and I, 
I think we all dread when we start talking about this poor Harbor Master boat because that's all we seem to do it every other meeting at least. But um, I'm assuming um, the rest of the boat is in fairly good shape and we're not going to invest fifteen to twenty thousand dollars in something that next year now we find out that the hull's cracked and so on and so forth. So I I don't know specifically much about the boat itself, but I would certainly want to make sure not to spend more money to re keep evaluating things. But I think that it's pretty clear that, you know, the Harbor master needs a boat. Um, you know, we've gone seasons and seasons. So obviously what needs to be done needs to be done. And unfortunately COVID has an impact on, on, um, you know, on getting a motor that's, you know, but uh, you got to start somewhere Would the funds for the replacement motor, uh, come from the, um, the Cove, Cove fund. Is that something, is that how that works, Kathy? What has yeah, to be that's done? that's how that would work. Okay. <clears throat> so would it have to go to town council and say, would you approve the funds? I mean, how many hoops needs to go through once you get these quotes and everybody's comfortable? We'd have to figure all that out to, just to <clears throat> check with the finance director as to how he wanted us to do it. Rachel, those quotes, they didn't say were inflated at all because of COVID. There's just a delay. Um, only one of the vendors mentioned the delay. The other vendor did not mention the delay, okay. but now <laughs> that one vendor did, now I'm going to have to go back to the other vendor and say, thanks for, um, providing your quote. Can you guarantee that we would have the engine prior to the start? That was part of the estimate was that we needed it prior. So that's why that one guy called and said, I'm going to be honest with you. I want to submit a quote, but I can't guarantee you I'm going to have it. And I told him, I appreciate your honesty. Um, so there is a potential that the other one might somehow have their hands already on 150, you know, horsepower engine. Um, but I, that part, I don't know. Yeah. So we'll keep you posted. Everybody. Mike brings up a good point, uh, Mike. In regard to make sure the boat can the boat itself is in good condition, and um, we've we've done work on it, but we can double check it when we when it when we right now we have it put it away for the winter, but certainly we can check that out too. Mm -hmm. Like it's got some blemishes, like low cracks and fiberglass, but I don't think it's very structural concerning wise. Yeah, I, I don't think none of, us, none of us want to go down that road again to try to find another boat. I bought a can of flex paint you can use for the hull. <laughs> it looks pretty good. My buddy actually did this boat. <laughs> so um, we'll keep you posted. Um, we. As we move forward, I'm, we're trying to move this along, but we wanted to give people time to get quotes into us. So if information, if we get to information where we're looking to, um, to make a decision, do you want to know about that decision or you, do you just want us to move forward through the town process? I mean, I would say move forward because if we delay it, it might not get in on time. And, and it sounds like the bids you're gonna get are probably gonna be within three, $4,000 of each other. So you're probably gonna go to the low bidder, right? So- oh, yeah, we, well, we would look at that. We would talk yes. to the Harbor Master and the Deputy Harbor Master. Yeah. You know, and some of our, you know, the town staff that are boating, you know, fire and police boat, we would, we would kind yeah. of do our, our own evaluation with everybody. Mm -hmm. I'm okay with it. I don't know, anybody else have an issue or? No. So if there's something you need from us, certainly we can do something with a special meeting. But I think most of us, at least me personally, it sounds like Dan, you know, it needs to be expedited just so we can get it done. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. All right. Uh, anything else? Are we good? Speaking of it, Dan, can I ask you a DMV question? Our boat is boat registration going to be delayed or no? Remember how last year there was an extension? Is it going to happen yeah, again sure. this year? Um. No, no. Okay. Not right now. There's not. And if you really need one, there's 20 dealers down by the shore or so um, that will actually issue a renewal right over the counter. We so got we can, them. So we can. So starting April 1st, for people getting in there, um, people have started to put. Sorry, 
purchase their moorings for the season. And so right. last year it was always April 1st came, oh, we don't have our updated registration, but this year they will have updated registrations for April 1st. Yeah, I mean, the was last year is um, April 30th. Year, I think. If you, oh, sorry, April, okay. Yeah, if you mailed yeah. it in last year, you would have gotten it. There's a lot of people that walk in with it and, okay. uh, you know, we weren't open. Okay. Um, so this year we're open right now anyway. So there, everything should be on schedule. Okay, thanks. And if I could just mention one other piece of new business, Dan, under uh, under the Harbor Master, the Harbor Management Commission is, um, w the town is looking to submit a grant to the state. They came out with a grant for um, looking to take care of any invasive aquatic uh, plants. And we have that issue in the cove. So we're currently going through a grant application process to submit that. We had had a, a, a vendor give us a report on what was going on in the cove and what would it take to clean it and what could it take. And, and so we're using that as our guide as we do the grant application. It's due to go in, it's due next Friday. So a week from tomorrow. And Rachel's helping with us getting that all together. And we've got help from other parts from engineering and planning. And believe it or not, the assessor's office, because they want, you have to prove that you own the land or water. And we don't really own the cove, but we really have to get the cove done. <laughs> so um, we're going to submit it that way. And so we have our fingers crossed that we might be a good candidate for that. And they can give you up to $50,000 if you qualify for that. You have to do a match of 25%. And we have the match in the Cove Preservation Fund. Yeah. So that's what we would look at. Unless the manager finds some other money, I would use his money first. But, mm -hmm. um, but that's what we're looking at. And we're going to look to potentially hire someone now because you have to go through a whole permitting process. And one way or the other, if we get the grant or get the grant, we still have to do something down there because it's going to get worse. It's not yeah. going to get better. So, so we have to look at that. So I just want to make the board aware of that, that we're working on that. Kathy, one other question on Harbor Management. Um, and refresh my memory because it's been a while. The regulations, the draft regulations that have been going back and forth for a while, I think last time or several meetings ago, there was some discussion on, were you gonna kind of review them with the police department and stuff? Cause they're I think still hanging out there. That, that is still hanging out there. Have not had a chance to get with the police department on that. And I do have it on my list. It's, we just haven't had a chance to get to it. Okay. I apologize for that, but it's, we just haven't had the time. <clears throat> but we wanna get it on the list, get it taken care of so we can take it off the list. It just, we just haven't had a chance. Very good. But I haven't forgotten, it's on my list. And one other thing before I forget, wasn't there some type of uh, group or somebody put together to uh, talk about the, the, not development, but what can be done or, um, you know, around the cove, talking about businesses and things. Wasn't there, was there a group together? Put together Peter, for that? Wasn't Peter Gillespie looking at doing an RFP? For what again? It's something to do with the cove and developing like businesses around there, wasn't that it? Or oh, can... the um, the manager has looked into whether or not they would look to have something else down there with the mm -hmm. planning department. And it, is there a business interested in being down there? Maybe, I'm going to say quote unquote restaurant. I don't really mean a restaurant, but something along that line. Is that what so you heard, it, Dan? Or? Yeah, I mean, if there's any change or anything like that, you know, certainly I think let us know. While yeah, we're... I haven't heard anything recently. Okay. But it's probably with COVID and everything, the most popular place in town, even in the winter. Mm -hmm. I'm hearing that a lot of people are still driving down there when the water isn't high, too high. It flooded with that big rainstorm. But I'll, I'll, I'll check and see. I haven't heard anything, but sometimes I might not regularly hear, but I can check. Okay. Very good. All right. Anything else? Everybody? 
And I'd like to make a motion to adjourn if everybody's in agreement. Second. Okay. All right. All those in favor. Second. You have to think Aye. about it. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Good all of you. Bye, everybody. Have a good night. Bye. 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 Good luck with your recovery. Yeah. Bye. Feel better, yes. Mike. Feel better, Mike. Okay, Mike. Yeah. Get better, Mike. Thank you. Yeah.